is Kelly Hill, Executive Editor of RCR Wireless News. And today I'm gonna to be talking with Trey Nemeth, who is General Manager and Senior Vice President of Small Cell and R&D at Raycap. How are you, Trey? I'm doing fine, thank you. Great, glad to have you here today. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about uh, C-band in particular, which is a hot topic right now. So uh, let's start off with kind of a general question. And that is, you know, how does the C-band rollout fill the gap in 5G deployments? Well, it's a good question. So what we generally hear and kind of like to say is that C-band is referred to as kind of a happy medium, if you will. Um, it, it sort of fits the gap between millimeter wave and some of the lower frequencies. Uh, it has superior coverage and penetration qualities, you know, when compared to millimeter wave, uh, but it also has very excellent bandwidth carrying capabilities um, when compared to the lower frequencies. And uh, we're seeing it uh, planned now. Uh, we're seeing new radios coming out from the carriers and uh, these are being planned for deployment. Um, these uh, C-band radios have very robust 5G functionality um, and the operators are, are really focused on this at the moment. Okay. And so how is RACAP going to be supporting the new 5G C-band spectrum? So we manufacture a lot of different products that are, uh, that are used for, you know, for different wireless nodes and, and C-band is, is no different. Um, I'd say that of the products that we generally provide, uh, the most impacted product by C-band or, or really uh, the most impacted by the frequency being used are our small cell poles and our macro concealment products. And there are a couple different reasons for that. So just on a basic level, these products are being used as infrastructure that, that literally holds the technology, right? So um, anytime that we have to introduce new radios, new antennas, uh, new technology within uh, say a small cell pole, which is you know inherently a small enclosed environment. We have to look at it from a structural perspective, a thermal perspective, which is huge. These radios put out a large amount of heat and anytime that you have them in an enclosed area, uh, you have to carefully consider that. And, um, and then obviously structural, we're adding more weight, more, more items to the pole potentially, you know, more wind load and so forth. So this is no different than when we were adding millimeter wave radios or when we were adding uh, any other technology that came before that. This is kind of just the, the general course of business. But where it really gets interesting is um, when we're referring to the actual performance of the C-band frequencies through concealment materials. So this is a higher frequency band um, than what's been traditionally used um, aside from millimeter wave. And um, in this you know, roughly 3.7 gigahertz range, these, um, these frequencies are very sensitive to what kind of concealment material uh, is being used. So we have to carefully consider that and uh, we have to select the proper uh, materials. Um, it, you know, as a general rule, the, the higher the frequency, the more sensitive uh, the, the signal is to propagation through different concealment materials. Um, and in general, uh, our experience and our testing has shown that uh, there are uh, some of the older uh, concealment materials that have been used, the materials specifically that contain a high glass content like fiberglass and so forth, are not good performers with C-band. Um, but fortunately we have a full line of, uh, of C-band compliant materials um, that we're uh, deploying um, on a regular basis that uh, are, uh, are ready to use for this technology. You know, everything from, and when I say concealment materials, concealment applications, I'm talking about everything from uh, small cell poles that have uh, radomes at the top where the antennas or radios are located to rooftop concealment screen walls and, and even very large concealment applications like clock towers and bell towers and things like that. Okay. Wow. So, so let's follow up on that a little bit. You know, so what are the biggest challenges that carriers face as they're planning and executing these new C-band sites? Um, and then, you know, how does RACAP help this process progress smoothly? Sure. So, you know, again, it's sort of a similar answer to as the last question in a way, in that C-band um, for us, depending on the, the product uh, type and the application, is, is just another technology. So when you're building the infrastructure that holds the radios and antennas and so forth, it's kind of technology agnostic in a way, uh, with the exception of the concealment material selection, like I mentioned. Um, and C-band is, is no different. So, you know, the operators are facing numerous challenges uh, for all the sites they deploy. C-band is the same. 
Um, there, um, it's a it's a consistent uh, challenge to get these sites approved and and on air and, and built, and and, and they're uh, they're working through that uh, every day. Um, we're treating it like we've treated all the other deployments for the past 25, 25 plus years, and in general, we're you know we're supporting them from the very beginning of the process. So from the site acquisition perspective. We, we generally are getting involved at that point to answer questions, to kind of provide expert advice on uh, potential applications for concealed sites um, and, and, um, and, and, and other input. And then the other way that we support is by providing photo simulations, drawings, things like this that are going to assist with getting these products approved through municipalities. Um, you know, after that, we're involved at, at every level. Um, once the sites get approved, obviously, and, and we get things moving along, we're, uh, we're working directly with the construction managers and the installers to ensure that the products get installed and are uh, put on air successfully. Okay, great. And well, it sounds like there's a lot going up on the towers. So, you know, as, as macro sites begin to add more radios, uh, cabling, electronics in support of the C-band spectrum, what is important for carriers and, and for contractors really um, to know about existing concealment on macro towers? Sure. Another good question. So this, this uh, strategy of installing C-band radios on existing towers, existing cell sites, you know, be, uh, be they towers or, or rooftop sites, is a very common strategy. Um, this is uh, relatively straightforward in, in many ways compared to new builds, um, especially when it just comes to, you know, taking an existing, say, uh, traditional tower and uh, adding a new radio to it or possibly taking a radio off and adding a new radio which happens to be a c-band radio so a lot of them are very straightforward they're kind of considered low-hanging fruit in the industry and they're attacking these first um, where this gets a little more complicated again is with the concealed sites because you really have to look at the concealment material and uh, you know uh, there have been concealed uh, cell sites being built since the mid 90s and we were involved in, in a lot of them and so there are tens of thousands of them out there. And as you go to deploy C-band on one of these existing sites, you know, step one is to look at what kind of concealment material was used originally during the construction, and is it compatible with the C-band frequencies? If not, we have to look for ways to, uh, to retrofit those. Um, so you know, even though these, uh, these existing concealments may have worked fine for the lower frequencies, uh, once you put the, these you know, new higher frequencies with 5G functionality, uh, like C-band has, it, you, you can run into some problems. And so um, we're seeing this become more and more common. Um, these, uh, and I think these existing uh, concealed sites are, are going to be more challenging as well because you, now you're talking about retrofitting concealment material. It's a, it's a much more complicated endeavor than just adding a radio on a tower, for example, and, and running, the structure, running the structural analysis. So. Um, I think you know. It, ultimately, it's important to partner w with an experienced uh, concealment expert um, with uh, materials that are approved by the carriers um, to do this, um, and uh, uh, you know, really making sure that we're ensuring proper site performance after installation. Okay, so let's let's dig a little bit deeper into that. You know, you mentioned the challenges there. You know, what do you, what do you think will be the most challenging part of that macro site concealment retrofit? process, you know, and, and how is RACAP going to be helping the carriers and the contractors in, in that regard as they deal with it? Sure. So what these products and projects become is, is almost uh, an individual engineering effort on, on each individual site, which is not ideal, right? If, if we want to go deploy C-band on 500 sites in a given uh, area, the ideal scenario would be to come up with a product that can work 500 times and, and, and put it up, right? That's the, that's the fastest and most efficient way. But uh, with existing concealed sites, there's a, a little more to it. So we have to consider uh, structural ramifications, cosmetic elements. You know, don't forget, at the, at the heart of these concealed sites, they're considered cosmetic products. That's why they were put up in the first place because the technology was uh, intended to be somewhat invisible to the general public. So if we have to match an existing um, faux brick wall, then we have to match the concealment material that we're replacing to be compatible with C-band as well. Um, it, it generally is required to physically visit the site um, and then come up with a, basically a customized design solution that'll work for that specific product and project. 
Um, it, it's not, as I mentioned, uh, usually reasonable to, to deploy kind of a catch-all product that will work for multiple locations. Um, this is something that uh, we have a, a vast experience with. Um, this is, um, you know, I, I, I've harkened back a couple times to, um, to some different uh, uh, deployments over the past years and, and probably showing my age a little bit. But the, um, you know, this is, reminds me a lot of, of deployments that we did some 20 years ago when, when PCS was first coming out. So the, you know, the PCS frequencies did not transmit well through a lot of the very thick fiberglass panels that were being used at the time. And uh, we did dozens and dozens of retrofit sites on those. And, and this is not much different. You know, we're, we're looking at the site and trying to come up with the most efficient way uh, that still, um, you know, maintains the uh, structural capacity of the existing screen wall and the cosmetic appearance of the existing screen wall or, con or concealment product. Um, and, uh, and do it in a way that's most cost effective for the carrier uh, and is easy to install so that it can get on air as quickly as possible.